surf industry. We are super psyched to be here. And I'm with my old friend, executive director of SEMA, Vipe Desai. Vipe, how are you doing? I'm good, Mike. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, man. It's Monday. Um, yeah, I'm not going to post this on Monday, but it is Monday. And uh, I'm just happy to be here. So, And I'm happy to be able to spend this time with you. Um, I want to dive right into it. I want to talk about Surfscape. Tell me when, tell me where. All right, Surfscape is coming up at the end of April. It's the weekend of April 26th and 27th. And we're super psyched uh, to get it going and everything. Uh, actually, I take that back. It's April 27th and 28th. 26th is load in for that. It's like I got I got so many dates running around in my head, but it is the weekend of April 27th and 28th. So um, for you, it starts on the 26th. For everybody else, well, for you, it's already started, but the setup starts on the 26th. But for you, it starts on the 27th and the 28th. Oh, it's backwards. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we're going to be in Huntington Beach. We're about three blocks south of Huntington Beach Pier uh directly across the street from the waterfront hilton awesome man well you know Vipe, we talk a lot and one thing we talk about is um brands being able to connect with the consumer and tell their stories better and 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 just really that face-to-face -face time um and i think what you're providing and what sema's providing with surfscape gives exactly that tell me more about when you guys came up with the Surfscape um, idea, those goals that you wanted to accomplish and how last year went and how um, this year will be even a step above last year. Yeah, look, Mike, you're right. You know, it's like I think over the last like maybe eight to 10 years, we've seen so many changes in the surf industry, you know. Uh, there's, there's no more trade shows out here on the West Coast. There's fewer and fewer events. Uh, you know, there's fewer new exciting products being launched where the consumer can actually kind of get their hands on it a little bit more. And, you know, the magazines are gone, too, for the most part. So how do consumers find out about new product outside of doom scrolling on social media? You know, it's like, how do we get people onto the beach, into the outdoors where they experience what surfing is all about? So the idea behind Surfscape was really let's get the brands outside and highlighting and showcasing their products where consumers can come and ask questions and check it out and demo the product as well. So really trying to create a completely different experience that will complement what's going on at retail. You know, this is kind of like that extra step in between you know, brand comes up with a product, but instead of waiting for a consumer to go into the store to buy it, why don't we give them a little bit of a, a, an immersive experience to ask questions uh, to the people that helped create it or the brands that are working on all this stuff? That's awesome. I mean, I, I saw the videos last year and it looked just like a great time. And from what I could tell, you know, like you said, you can demo product. And then there's the other side of it, too, from what I saw is if you don't have a product to demo, you can have some sort of the brand can have an activation at the booth that explains their product or how their product solves a problem or how their product benefits the end user, um, even if it's not like a board you can paddle out on. Um, what were some of the most creative activations that you saw last year? Yeah, look, I think really at the end of the day, Mike, it's about getting people to look under the hood of how things are made in the industry. And I think one of the biggest takeaways that I got from last year and talking to like the, the folks that came, the public that came there, they loved seeing Ryan Harris glass aboard. You know, a lot of these, uh, you know, people that buy surfboards, they're only buying the surfboard, but they don't really understand how it's being made. So this was an experience that they wanted to see. How does a board get glassed with like resin color and everything like that? And then if you went over to like the Visla area, they have their shaping booth 
you know, and they and fans could see how boards were shaped and made and everything. Once again, this is the stuff that people don't really get to see up close. You might get to see a video. You might get to hear people talk about it, but to actually see it being done, I think gets people more excited about their board or the next board that they want to get. Um, but it's also the brands that are demoing wetsuits too. You know, it's like I saw last year with the guys at O'Neill and Rip Curl, you know, fans were coming up to them asking questions about their wetsuits and everything. So it's stuff that you may not get in depth when you're at a retail store or if you're looking at a web page or scrolling on, you know, social media. This way they got to talk to the people behind the brand that know the product inside out and they got to get into the details and everything. So, you know, whether it's stuff like that, even Surfrider Foundation, the board builders, the wetsuit guys, um, you know, everybody got a chance to showcase their product, the benefits of their product and allow the public to ask questions about it before they went out and made a purchase. That's awesome. I mean, you get a little taste and then you could also walk up to Jack's HSS, Seiko, Rock and Fig, 17th Street. Uh, I'm trying to think if I'm forgetting anybody, but any of the shops that are located pretty much across the street. Now, I remember, you know, when you were setting this up last year and spots were filling up pretty quick and uh, a couple of people um didn't get a chance to sign up. You know, they waited a little too long. So my next question is, who is going to be new this year that wasn't there last year? Um, and what new upcoming brands that are going to be there that people should know about? Yeah, you know, look, um, I think, uh, you know, you're seeing like the, 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 the mid-sized brands coming back in a big way, like, you know, Jetty, and Visla, um, Ava's coming as well. Uh, but you're getting like the staple brands too, like the Rip Curls and the O'Neills coming as well. So there's a little bit of the 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 larger brands that are coming. There's the mid-sized brands, and then you got some small size brands coming too. You know, the Rusty guys will be there. Uh, WRV will be there as well. Um, there's just a good mixture of brands. And what I think we're seeing is that there's a fresh outlook on what surf looks like today. It's not just about a surf brand, but it's also the outdoor brands that are coming as well. We're getting guys coming in that are from the outdoor camping world, kind of like the Van Overland Expo type people, you know, because I think everything crosses over now. You've got the you know, the e-bikes, uh, we got HB rad power bikes coming out as well. And, you know, guys are like, hey, I want to go for a surf. I want to throw a board under my arm and ride down on my e-bike, you know. And then they're like, hey, I want to take the family on a trip. Let's throw the boards in the van and load up the camper stuff and everything like that. And let's hit the road or something. So there's this really cool crossover that's happening now that, you know, I don't think we've really had a chance to see in the past, you know, where it's not just surf brands and we're talking to the same people, but there's surf and outdoor and camping and, you know, van travel, van life, stuff like that. So it's all kind of coming together in this really killer experience. And that's what I saw last year play out. You know, you saw guys go from checking out wetsuits and surfboards to checking out the rooftop tents. You know, so I think that's a really cool connection for us to look at. Yeah. And I, I want one of those rooftop tents. I mean, really badly. I Because I, I got to tell you, I've been saying, I've said it a hundred times, especially lately with the explosion of overland camping. If you're a California surfer, surfing and camping are hand in hand. I mean, I never went on tropical trips till I got older, but I could always drive up the California coast and camp at Halama. Now I know camping's changed since we were young, but if you look at things like hip camp, where you can literally get a campsite days before you wanna go, I mean, you you got no excuse. I mean, camping and surfing, and like you said, e-bikes for the California surfer, those things go hand in hand. Now, besides camping and surfing, um, I believe you have a skate element this time too, yeah? 
Yeah, we're adding a little bit of skate in there as well. So uh, this is being spearheaded by our friends at Bones Love Milk. Uh, it's a division of Got Milk. It's kind of like their action sports division, but they're coming in doing some really fun activations. But we've got um, skate dogs coming in to, you know, teach kids um, how to skate. We've got uh, Stasic coming in as well. Some kids e-bikes to give them demos. One wheel is coming in also. So there's a little bit more of a skate element brewing with Surfscape this year. And look, the idea is that there's room for a lot of different brands and categories. You know, it's not just surfing that we want to have there. We want all these things that kind of revolve around surfing as well. You know, when the waves are bad, you're probably skateboarding. OK, you know, and if you're not skateboarding and it's winter time and there's snow, you're probably up at the mountain snowboarding. Uh, you know, the Icon Pass guys are coming and they're going to do a, a pre-sale on next year season passes and you can get a deal on your next year season pass at Surfscape at a better deal than you would, you know, if you were to just go get it online. Yeah. I think one thing that you're really hitting on the head, well, one of the multiple things you're hitting on the head with Surfscape is this is a fun day for the family. Cause I can tell you my son, even though I've skated my whole life and my son skates with me, I signed him up for skate dogs and he loved it. Still talks about it today. They run such a great program there. And it's one thing to skate with your dad. It's another thing to go skate with a bunch of other 10 year olds. You know, um, you mentioned Bones Got Milk. I actually saw those guys um, at VidCon. They had their half pipe set up, a couple pros there. And again, my at the time he was probably eight. He was there. He had a blast. And the Bones Love Milk guys were amazing with the kids. How many kids don't want to try a one wheel and how many parents don't want to get their kids a one wheel? Imagine trying it in a safe space with other people. Then you're talking about the icon path pass. I mean, it it really is a fun day for the family, even down to the shaping bays. I mean, you might be able to go down to Hobie and watch someone shape, but your kids are running around the store driving you nuts. Imagine it being interactive with your children out sun in the Outside, sorry, outside in the sun with the fresh air. It Surfscape really does sound like a great day for the family. That benefits our industry. That's yeah. the other important part. Because Vibe, I, I got to say, SEMA in the last couple of years, man, going from manufacturers to members, you guys are really looking at it like, how do we not just help our manufacturers? But then there's the retail part that needs help too, which are our members. How do we bring those two together? And I think uh, Surfscape is a little shake and a little bake. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. I appreciate that. I'm glad you see that. That is definitely the vision behind Surfscape. You know, we want to bring value to the industry as a whole. Everybody wins out of this. This isn't about bypassing the retailer or, you know, uh, you know, create, creating any more uh, difficulties with selling product or anything like that. The idea behind this is our, our, our tagline for Surfscape is discover your stoke. You know, this is where families can come. Mom and dad can try wetsuits and surfboards and have fun and everything and trade off watching the kids and the kids can have fun doing their thing as well. There's food trucks there. There's some educational talks with Surfrider Foundation around sustainability. So really, there's a little bit of something for everybody. And when the family gets together and they're like, you know, we love to surf. We love the outdoors. We love to skate. We love to snowboard and all that stuff. Maybe we got to think about getting a, a sprinter van or something and getting it outfitted so we can go out and do more stuff. This is really about introducing people to new things that they may not have had a safe space to go to in the past. Where do I go to check out a Sprinter van that, you know, without getting hassled to buy it right now? Just come and check it out. What about a rooftop tent? What about an e-bike? Hey, my kids always wanted to get into riding motorcycles. Well, here's Stasic Bike coming up with the little e-bikes and there's gonna be a little track on the site where kids can try it out. We wanna make this fully experiential. Ask questions, pick up stuff, try something, and discover something new. I love it. And uh, Vibe, one more thought slash question, conversation yeah. topic, topic before I let you go. You know, I've been watching a lot of videos, 
talking to a lot of people. And we talk about um, one of the conversations that comes up is so many people got introduced to the outdoor single man sports lifestyle during COVID, but there was no community around them because let's say you got into skateboarding and you could do it by yourself in your garage, but you never found a community of other skaters to go skate with, or you never found another community of, you know, one wheelers or surfers or whatever. Um, and we've always said, if we can just get 1% of the people that got introduced to surfing to stay, our industry will flourish and grow. Um, Surfscape kind of sounds like that place where that 1% could go and discover their stoke. Um, it sounds like a place where they could go and find other people that got introduced to these activities, maybe during COVID like they did. Um, I guess it's not really much of a question, but what, well, what, what do you think about that? Um, those people that did it by themselves now coming down and finding a community. Yeah, look, Mike, you're spot on. I mean, how do we keep people involved with surfing? Um, and, you know, I think that's one thing that I see that these new participants are looking for. They're looking for community. They're looking for their tribe. They're looking to fit in. And, um, you know, I think things like Surfscape fit that opportunity for people to meet others like them. Um, Tamp Shred definitely does. Boardroom Show does as well. I mean, these are all events to help nurture people's stoke and continued journey into our world. And I know that there's some people out there that probably talk about like, oh, the lineups are crowded and all that stuff. But look, at the end of the day, you know, you can still find a space to go surf. You know, there's always a wave for you. You know, there's wave parks coming up as well. There's plenty of waves for people. And maybe you got to hit the road a little bit and get adventurous to find a spot too. But at the end of the day, Things like Surfscape, Camp Shred, and Boardroom Show is how we build community a little bit more. And this benefits brands and retailers. This isn't about just like one brand and one retailer or anything. This is something where people come, they get stoked, they try something new, and then they go back to their hometown and they look at it in their local shop or they tell their friends about it and everything. And then they continue to grow that passion and that stoke. Awesome. Well, I know I'll be at Surfscape again. Uh, we'll just say Surfscape is April 27th and 28th, uh, just a little bit down from the south side of the pier in Huntington Beach. Don't miss out. Vibe, thank you so much for being here. And we will uh, see you guys next time on Welcome to the Surf Industry. Mm -hmm.